I know what you're thinking. How can we use math to pick stocks that are the most likely to succeed? Well, that's easy. First, we need to find the best sectors in the current market environment using numbers. Then we find the best stocks in each of those sectors while also using basic math. Finally, we simply put our money where our mouth is and put in recurring buy orders or manually build out our position over time. Let's not overcomplicate this, it's pretty easy. What sectors are growing the fastest and have the most money being poured into them year after year? Here's seven. Now let's look at the stocks we can pull out of each of these. Come on, we all knew AI would be on the list, and I'm sure you also knew that NVIDIA would be on this list. And to be honest, I don't even need to review this one. They aren't just B2B. I've made plenty of videos about NVIDIA's game-changing tech and their overall financials. If you don't own the stock already, then my commentary certainly won't change your mind. So let's move on. Now, both of these are interesting ones because they aren't B2C directly, but they are B2B that support pretty much all AI B2C companies. ASML literally makes the systems called lithography machines that print the templates for AI chips. You know, the chips that Nvidia is selling for 40 to $50,000 each, not too shabby. ASML's latest and greatest machine uses EUV or extreme ultraviolet lithography, basically using what seems like magic reflecting light off of mirrors to shorter and shorter wavelengths to create smaller and smaller patterns. Just think the smaller the patterns or the thinner the lines that ASML can print onto silicon wafers, the more transistors manufacturers can fit on the chips. And as a result, the more processing power they will have. Moore's law is literally only possible thanks to ASML's technology. These machines are about the size of a bus and go for a measly quarter of a billion dollars each. I'm sure you can see why ASML may do pretty well as technology demands smaller and smaller chips. Don't worry, I didn't forget about Taiwan Semiconductor. ASML builds the machines and TSM manufactures the chips using those machines. And if you were wondering just how dominant TSM is, you can look at their market share where they account for 56% of the global semiconductor foundry market and around 90% of the world's leading edge semiconductors that are used for artificial intelligence and quantum computing applications. They make virtually all of the little microchips that power your phone, your laptop, your tablet, pretty much all the things you own and use on a daily basis. We all know AI is gonna be huge, but don't take my word for it. McKinsey and Company, one of the largest consulting companies on the planet, states generative AI's impact on productivity could add trillions of dollars in value to the global economy. Trillions with their latest estimate being the equivalent of 2.6 to 4.4 trillion annually. And for perspective of just how ridiculous that is, the UK's entire economy was 3 trillion in 2022. So yeah, at this point, I'm just beating the dead horse. Just buy some damn exposure to artificial intelligence. The three companies we just talked about own the market, at least for now. Whether you believe in global warming or not doesn't really matter. Save that argument for politics or environmental science class. What does matter, however, is the facts and Data is showing that investment in renewable energy is growing fast. If you don't believe me, it's projected to grow at nearly 10% for the next decade and reach 2 trillion by 2031 on the most conservative projections I could find. Some reports have this growth rate in the upper teens all the way up to 20% surpassing that of artificial intelligence. In any case, solar is projected to be the fastest growing form of renewable energy, and that's because adoption of solar tech is happening very fast. Solar share of the global cumulative power capacity or the total energy that can be generated from solar tech is soaring and whether you believe it or not is expected to surpass our good old friends of coal and natural gas by 2027 that's just four years away folks and well you may have already expected this one because i just made a video on this company but enphase is the golden standard for a profitable high growth solar company and trust me I put my money where my mouth is. I've lost thousands of dollars in my Enphase position, albeit unrealized. But either way, I was doubling down at 160 and then tripling down at 120 and then 
quadrupling down it you know it doesn't matter you get the point the fact is i'm down a lot of money but there's still a lot to be happy about with this company they have the best business model in the industry are the most profitable and the stock is not faltering due to a business problem. It has to do with the current market environment. People aren't willing to spend money on solar systems right now. B to C discretionary companies like Enphase and Tesla struggled the most in this market environment. They are expensive products and aren't fun to finance in a high interest environment. However, their leadership is confident in the future of the company, down far more money than I am right now. The sector is heavily supported by government tax breaks and subsidies. You know, I'm done ranting about Enphase. If you want some more information on PV tech, the solar industry, and Enphase as a whole, go check out my video. Other notable mentions include Next Era Energy, which also happens to be the world's largest generator of renewable energy from the wind and sun and a world leader in battery storage. And we certainly can't forget about Tesla, but don't worry, we'll get into that one in a little bit. Cloud computing gives everybody, including you and I, access to the most innovative technology in the world. Without actually needing to buy NVIDIA's $50,000 chips and maintain a supercomputer the size of a Megalodon. And let's be honest, would you ever put down that much money to have access to greater processing speeds and increased storage? No. Nobody would. And that's exactly why the cloud computing model has become so important to the next three stocks on our list in particular, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. These companies are investing heavily into AI chips to build out their data center infrastructure. Again, don't believe me. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, who's a pretty wealthy and intelligent guy, says that these companies are pouring $250 billion. Yep, you heard that right billion per year into data center infrastructure. And this number is set to grow at an 11% clip each year until 2030. That's some serious money being invested into the sector and therefore we should expect all the leaders, namely Amazon's AWS, Microsoft's Azure, and Google's Google Cloud to reap the benefits. These data centers give us the ability to use cloud services like buying extra storage on your phone, collaborative software in Google Suite, and additional AI power to build out a software. Obviously, these companies are all no-brainers if you just look at their historical performance, but there is some additional incentive coming in the future. Not sure why you wouldn't own these already, but to each their own. The future of mobility is incredibly important to our future. And let's go back to our good old friends at McKinsey for some help to understand why. First, nobody likes to sit in traffic. Drivers in Munich waste an average of 87 hours in traffic every year. In Los Angeles, wasted time in traffic hit 119 hours before the pandemic. Either way, wasting time on the road sucks. But it's not just that. Private car congestion encourages developers to build garages and public officials to install more parking spaces, gobbling up scarce, valuable urban land that could otherwise be devoted to parks or other amenities. And this isn't just some BS, it's backed by the data. The United States, one of the world's most car-dependent countries, now has eight available parking spots for every single car. Also, the expansion of roadways and related infrastructure to ease congestion puts the government in a tough spot, ultimately forcing them to spend more money on maintenance and operations. Those of us that used to or currently have a commute to work, you, you can understand the mystery of paying a toll and wondering sometimes where that money's actually going. And most critically, McKinsey points out, the high rates of private car ownership are contributing to increased carbon emissions. I'm guessing you guys all see where this one's going, and that's Tesla. At this point, I don't think there's any question as to how important Tesla will be to the future. KPMG states the future of mobility is being fueled by three key technology-driven disruptive trends. Electrification of vehicles, connected and autonomous vehicles, and mobility as a service. All of which happen to fall right into Tesla's wheelhouse, and frankly, there's nobody even close. The banter about Tesla being just a car company and whatever the hell else is out there has been completely squashed at this point. Elon Musk claims that Tesla is at least five years ahead of anybody else in the field when it comes to full self-driving. Tesla's dojo, their proprietary supercomputer, specializes in AI for full self-driving and has only accelerated this gap. Love him or hate him for a variety of reasons, I think we can all agree he's a pretty smart guy and has some great visibility on the sector as a whole. Right now, it should come as no surprise that private ownership is the most popular mode of transportation. But 
that preference is changing. A 2022 McKinsey survey says 46% of respondents are open to replacing their private vehicles with other modes of transport in the coming decade, and 70% are willing to use a shared autonomous shuttle. It's clear that at least for urban residents, they may ultimately prefer to use a robo-taxi fleet, or what we call mobility as a service, anyways. Tesla has plans to address robo-taxi fleets, fully autonomous vehicles, communication between vehicles, all the things that are driving KPMG's three disruptive innovations for the future of mobility. Tesla does a lot of other cool AI stuff too, but that's enough on Elon. As technology continues to evolve, the communication between the tech needs to improve. That's the only way we can fully realize a system's full potential, and that's exactly what Internet of Things is helping us to do. Think two fully autonomous vehicles talking to each other on the road, practically guaranteeing the safety of their passengers. Or smart home appliances that are connected directly to your Google Assistant or Alexa. Shit, I'm gonna be late. Hey Alexa, could you make me a coffee? No. Internet of Things is really just a way to give a brain to the things you use on a daily basis, and that's why we typically call them smart technologies. This is a sneaky one you may not have expected because frankly, they've been in the dump for so long now. Intel is an advanced chip manufacturer like TSM is, both supporting advanced connectivity or Internet of Things technology. However, Intel may have less risk moving forward and you could argue even a few advantages over the rest of their competition. First, as you may have already figured, Taiwan Semiconductor is located in Taiwan. And we've all heard that the tensions between China and Taiwan are growing. Speculate as you will, but if China were to invade Taiwan, that would spell disaster for the manufacturing world, which would also impact every other tech company using TSM to make their chips, namely Nvidia, you get the point. Well, if this is even a remote possibility, then why not use Intel as a hedge for investing in TSM? Also, Intel is really the only American chip manufacturer, and if you know one thing about America, it's that we love to support our homegrown manufacturing facilities. The Chips and Science Act does exactly that, providing new funding opportunity to projects with capital investment below $300 million involving the construction, expansion, or modernization of commercial facilities in the United States for semiconductor materials and manufacturing equipment. Oh, oh, they changed that? Oh, my mistake, there's no upper limit now. Intel could receive anywhere from 2.5 to 7.5 billion for its Arizona and Ohio fab projects. How could I forget? Those EUV machines, the ones that ASML makes, the, the big ones like a boss that go for like $250 million? Yeah, well, Intel is getting first dibs on those, so just something to keep in mind. Just make it easy on yourself and get some exposure to Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dogel on Mars. Two of them I'm serious about. Next. Last, but certainly not least, we enter the realm of data privacy and protection, or cybersecurity. Data is the new currency across the digital economy. People will pay a lot of money just to get your information on their customer list. And unfortunately, when things start to become valuable, you have people that want to steal and take that information to benefit their own wealth. This stat may be slightly uneasing, but in the United States, about half a million accounts are hacked every day. And it's estimated about one in three Americans are hacked every year. I'm not here to teach you about why creating strong passwords is important, but it definitely seems like it could be a good idea. But don't worry, Fortinet and CrowdStrike Holdings are here to protect you. Keep in mind, these companies like Enphase are still in their early growth stages and have a lot of room to improve. The good news, Fortinet is already profitable and CrowdStrike expects to be profitable early next year, both bragging gross profit margins of 70% plus. These companies provide additional layers of security for your personal devices, internet endeavors, and cloud usage. And this is a serious concern for companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft that rely heavily on their cloud business for future growth. With cloud exploitation jumping 95% just last year, the trend is clear. Better cloud security walls are needed. Let's use logic. If cloud usage is expected to grow quickly and cloud investment is growing quickly, then cloud security needs to grow even faster to keep up with the demand. And that's exactly what cybersecurity companies like Fortinet and CrowdStrike Holdings are here to do. 
Palo Alto Networks is another one to consider, but I'll let you do your fair share of research on that because it's kind of expensive. Who would have ever thought you could use basic math combined with simple logic to identify the most important sectors and therefore the most important technologies to the future of our world? If you're down as much money as I am in a lot of these positions, please let me know make me feel a little bit better. If you enjoyed the video, the research, and the information, please, please let me know and subscribe. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.